as a former professional quarterback, people ask me all the time, what's the funniest thing that ever happened to you on a football field? And I have dozens of stories to choose from, including one with the USC band, which I'll get to later. But today, I'm going to tell you about my run-in with the dirty cheerleader from Oregon. And that's coming up right now in the film room. Hey everybody, welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski. Today, I just want to tell you a fun story because I get people that ask me all the time about what the funniest thing is that ever happened to me. And I have a story about an abusive cheerleader from Oregon that I'm going to tell you. But first, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and ring the bell. That way you get notified every time I have new content coming out. Please give me a thumbs up if you like football content, if you like hearing about the game or learning about the game. And leave me a comment down below. I would love to answer any questions you have. I'm here to help you learn the game better. Now, back to Memorial Stadium. Back in college, I was a quarterback at Cal. Obviously, we played in Berkeley. And we played in the Pac-10 at that time. Going into my senior year, 1991, our team was really, really good. Fourth game of the season, we beat UCLA on the road 27-24. The game before, we had a last-minute field goal versus University of Arizona. Doug Bryan was our kicker, went on to play for a decade-plus in the NFL uh, and put one right over the upright to win the game versus the Wildcats down in Tucson. We'd beaten Purdue handily. We beat UOP 86-24 to open that season. And so we were a pretty good football team. Coming into Week 5, we were ranked number 13 in the country. And we were playing the Oregon Ducks. This is back when Rich Brooks was the head coach. And I always had respect for and liked Oregon. The year prior, Bill Musgrave had been the quarterback up there for Oregon. uh, And I always liked him as a quarterback as well. They had a guy by the name of Chad Cota that when you turned on the film and just popped it up, this guy stood out immediately. Great football player. You probably know his name from his pro career. Before every game... I would come out, had a traditional workout where I would come out and I would throw the ball around a little bit, get loose, get stretched. We'd put our pads on, the whole team would get together, and we would all go down and have our pregame warm-up. So we went through all of that, fully warm, fully stretched. Then you always kind of go back in. We did that, went back in as a home team. Then we came back out. Well, my tradition was that when I would come back out to kind of get rid of some of those nerves... I would run a sprint up and down the sideline. Then as soon as I got done running the sprints, and I would run from the 50 to the goal line and then back to the 50. As soon as I got done with that sprint, I would do a back pedal towards the goal line and then back up. Just burn off that energy, get loosened back up, get ready to go. Well, when we came back out, I did my sprint, 50 and back, kind of got that going. And then I turned around to back pedal. And as I'm back pedaling, I get about 15 yards just outside of the box that you see on the sideline there. It's a coaching box where the team can stay within that box. And again, this is still pre-game. Nobody's on the field yet. Game hasn't started yet. Refs haven't blown the whistle yet. And just as I get outside of that box, all of a sudden, boom, I feel something. And I'm kind of shocked. And I turn around, and I see it's one of the Oregon cheerleaders. And I feel horrible. I mean, I feel absolutely awful. I had zero intent of running into anybody. I I was clearly just trying to warm up. And I turn around and I'm like, oh my gosh, can I help? Can I help you up? Can I? I'm sorry. And literally, as soon as I said this, this cheerleader let out with a stream of obscenities that I would be shocked to hear out of a sailor's mouth. She was like, f you, you son of a You're a son of a that you, you're such an asshole. And I was like, and then she was like, you're a you, you. And then I was like, and then she was like, why don't you go, you, you. you're such an asshole. I can't believe you did that. You're a, you, do. what a, are you? And I went, now I, I understand. She was shocked. I was shocked. But I was trying to tell her, look, I'm really sorry. I didn't, I wasn't trying to run you over. I wasn't, I'm, you know, I apologize. She could have won a cussing bee at that point. She didn't want my hand. She didn't want my help. She wanted to keep yelling at me. So I was like, okay, whatever. Sorry. Went around her, did my back pedal, came back. So whatever, no big deal. I just let it go. Well, we get into the game 
and we get down towards the goal line, and I, I'm not hearing anything on the sidelines. I'm, I'm not hearing the crowd. I'm not hearing anybody yelling at me. When I'm in the game, I'm in the zone. I'm kind of locked in. And we come out, and we run play action to the left-hand side. The visitor section is up in that south end zone, south corner. And so the Oregon cheerleaders station up right in front of that section of stands for their fans. And we score and, you know, put the hands up, celebrate. And all of a sudden, I hear, you know, I, it, it kicks back in. I'm out of that zone. I kind of let it go. And I hear a stream of obscenities coming from the corner of the end zone. And it's the Oregon cheerleaders, all of them, the, the women cheerleaders, the men cheerleaders, all of them cussing and yelling at me. Again, with the all of those things. And I'm like, like, let it go, right? It's over. Let it go. So whatever. I you know, go back. We celebrate with the team, head back to the sideline. Offense comes out again. We come down, score again. And I start getting the same thing from the Oregon cheerleaders. And at that point for me, it became so funny. Like, they're really not going to let this go. And so we would score. And when we did, we were down on that end of the field. I would point over and point at her, blow her a kiss, you know, open my hands to all of them. And it became like a game for me. I was having fun with it. It literally, it, it totally settled me down in the game. I was like... I was jazzed that I had that to kind of laugh about and have a good time about. And I was telling my offensive linemen about it, telling the receivers about it, telling everybody on the field about it. And we would literally all laugh heading back to the sideline because here is, you know, this picture of a school. She's a representative of Oregon and she is cussing worse than any teamster you've ever heard. It was so bad and it was so funny all at the same time. And so that's one of those stories that I have from my college days. Again, just a story, good time story. What happens on the football field? We always think about gridiron, so tough, so focused. But just one of those funny things that happened to me over the course of my career. And it's one that I remember with fondness. So if you're the cheerleader and you're out there, thank you very much. It's awesome. It has given me a lifetime of good memories, laughs, chuckles, and maybe the life of the party telling the story. Anyway. All of you at home, I hope you enjoyed that story. Just wanted to set the scene, talk about college football, what it's like out there playing, and give you a picture of the fun things that happen on the field. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, please subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. That way you make sure you get the content every time it comes up. Give me a thumbs up if you've seen any R8 cheerleaders, which I hope you have because it's fantastic. And leave me a comment down below. Love to hear from you. Until next time, this has been the Quarterback Film Room for Elite Athletes TV. (laughs) 